exit would be massively destabilizing at a time when the world economy is in trouble, when uh, there's a lot of uh, business uncertainty. The key points I was trying to make were the need to look at this issue in a dispassionate way, based on evidence, and in particularly focusing on the economic stuff, to be rigorous in being very clear about what alternatives to British membership of the European Union we're talking about. Uh, I'm clearly of the in tendency, because I think the evidence, the economic evidence, points in that way, quite apart from any political prejudices I might have. I think the um, quantifiable benefits of the single market, including the free movement of labour, uh, are tangible. Uh, I think it would be extremely difficult for Britain outside the European Union to have the same clarity and access to overseas markets that it does at the moment. Um, I, I find it very difficult to see how the deregulatory agenda could be significantly advanced because most of the things we do are driven by British priorities in any event. It's very difficult to have a debate which is uh, clear and lucid when one set of people are saying the alternative is a socialist paradise and others say it should be a completely free market economy and others are saying it would be a chaotic mess. What are we actually comparing like with like? The analogy that I often make is with the Norwegian case because they had a referendum back in the 70s at the same time we did. They came to opposite conclusions. Actually, I was involved in both campaigns, just a point of interest. And what they have finished up with is a country that is perfectly prosperous and successful and suffered grievously from being outside the European Union. But at the same time, uh, they pay the same contribution as we do, roughly, per capita. They have the same number of European immigrants per capita as we do. And they have relatively little say in the decision making about regulation. So why is their position preferable to ours? It's not clear. We don't actually know what the alternative would be. We do know that it would be disruptive, perhaps massively disruptive, but certainly very disruptive. It would have a serious impact on the confidence of business investment in the UK, including overseas people who invest here. It may be that in 15 or 20 years' time it all gets sorted out and levelled up, but I, I, I think that at a time when the British economy is very far from being out of the mire, we're inflicting on ourselves potentially an enormous uncertainty and cost if we leave.